The top stories tonight and why news holding a possible live media interview with President Rodrigo Duterte is under discussion in Malacanang. The Department of Health cautions the public against interpreting information about the origin of the Azixixis strain of COVID-19 virus in the Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte already has a list of names considered to fill the vac vacated PhilHealth president and CEO post. Meanwhile, Senator Panfilo Lacson sees the possible filing of charges against top PhilHealth official. The Anti-Red Tape Authority might conduct a summary hearing on telco applications for cell tower construction. Travel restrictions, shutdowns of non-essential stores and physical distancing rules have heavily impacted the retail business in Australia. And the European Union signs a contract with AstraZeneca on supplies of potential COVID-19 vaccine. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, August 27, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and the world. Avang Ilocastro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, holding a possible live media interview with President Rodrigo Duterte is under discussion in Malacanang. Rosa Licaz explains why. Several issues have been raised again regarding President Rodrigo Duterte's health condition. Malacanang reveals they are considering to hold a live media interview with the President. However, if this will push through, the President might have a virtual press conference. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque reiterates that the country's chief executive knows his obligations under the Constitution as to telling the public about his health condition. We're talking about it. He's a lawyer. He knows his obligation. He took an oath as a lawyer and as president to uphold the laws of the land and the constitution. And the constitution only says if there is a serious illness, is there an obligation to um, reveal to the public the details of his health condition. The palace also defends why the president's speeches, which are aired at a later time than the actual meeting with his officials, are edited. We are editing it because it's not just an address to the nation. It's also a meeting with select members of the cabinet. And we edit out the portions which are not for public consumption because, as I said, you cannot make good policy just on the basis that they are popular policies. No? Malacanang adds this is also part of the president's executive privilege or the right to maintain confidential communications. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Health Department cautions the public against interpreting information about the origin of the existing strain of COVID-19 virus in the Philippines. Our health correspondent, Aiko Miguel, explains why. Because the sample is still small and uh, the areas are limited, so it is uh, not conclusive yet for us to give con uh, adequate or accurate conclusions. We need more details, we need more data, we need to further the study so that we can accurately say na talagang hindi yung mga Chinese ang nag-spread at nagkaroon tayo ng iba pang pinanggalingan ng mga sources of infection natin. Experts continue their study to determine the origin of the strain of virus causing COVID-19 that is spreading in the Philippines. By conducting a genome sequencing of samples from COVID-19 patients, experts can determine which strain of SARS-CoV-2 has infected an individual and where it originated. Last August 19, the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine or RITM stated there are five strains of COVID-19 virus seen in several samples. 
The original strain of the virus from China are classified as lineages A and B. These were seen in the first three cases of COVID-19 in the Philippines in January. Samples were collected from three Chinese nationals with travel history in Wuhan, China. The other samples showed lineages that are associated with Italy, some parts of Europe, some parts of North America and Asia. But the DOH emphasizes the samples that experts are examining have been gathered from some parts of the Philippines. This is why the DOH explains that further study should be done before concluding the origin of the strains of SARS-CoV-2 spreading in the Philippines. The health department adds genome sequencing of some cases of COVID-19 in the country will help the DOH craft more health protocols that will help people be aware of what to do to avoid contracting COVID-19. I go Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. More than a week after he was rushed to the hospital due to pneumonia caused by COVID-19, Senator Bong Revilla says he is finishing his treatment and quarantine at home. In a Facebook Live video post, the senator shares his road to recovery from the disease. According to Revilla, his fight against COVID-19 had been difficult. It all started with simple sore eyes until he developed symptoms such as fever and chills. According to the senator, he did not expect to catch the virus with his active fitness lifestyle. Yung mga pakiramdam na naramdaman ko, yung pain sa katawan, sa mga buto-buto. Ito, sa lahat, sa likod, grabe yung pain na naramdaman ko dyan. Tapos yung, yung, yung sakit sa ulo, uh, parang may, may electricity na guma, gumagapang sa, sa balat ko, sa ulo ko. Uh, ang tindi po, uh, hindi ko winish na sana magkaroon yung yung mga ibang tao na abutin yung katulad ng nabut ko dahil napakahirap po. The senator admits he was saddened by those who wished for his death. Yung ibang tao, imbis na i-wish ka na gumaling ka, nag wish pa na mamatay ka na. Nakakalungkot. Pero ganun pa man sa akin, pinapatawad ko sila. Hindi nila alam yung ginagawa nila. Basta mahal ko pa rin kayo kahit na winish nyo ako na ganun. Revilla thanked all the people who helped and prayed for his recovery. He advises the public to boost their immune system and to follow the minimum health standards to avoid contracting the disease. Kaya nasa sa atin na po ang uh, pag-iingat. Lalo-lalo na kailangan ng gobyerno buksan na ekonomiya. So, nasa sa atin po yan, yung pagmamahal, pagmamalasakit sa sarili at sa pamilya. It should start from us. Manila City offers free cremation services for COVID-19 death cases among its residents. While other local government units continue to provide free cremation service or financial assistance for COVID-19 deaths. Asher Kadapan Jr. details why. As the Interagency Task Force on the Emerging Infectious Diseases imposes the cremation of individuals who died from COVID-19 within 12 hours, crematoriums are overwhelmed with the increasing number of COVID-19 death cases. In Manila, there are already about 300 cases of deaths related to COVID-19. Free cremation eases grieving families' burden as the service of private crematorium costs 12,000 to 100,000 pesos. The Manila City Government, in partnership with the Manila North Cemetery, or MNC, announced that they will provide free cremation service for residents of Manila who died due to COVID-19. Kailangan po doon, confirm COVID or probable or suspect COVID po. Dapat po nakalagay po yung sa death certificate plus sa address po ay dapat po talaga taga Maynila. 
MNC Director Rosel Yaya Castaneda further emphasized that the free service is on a first-come, first-served basis and the relative of the deceased must be the one to go directly to the cemetery's office. They should bring with them the death certificate and a photocopy of the identification card of the deceased. The relative must also provide a photocopy of their own ID as proof of relation to the deceased. Relatives should also provide their own urn or jar for the ashes and limited number of family members are only allowed to go to the cemetery for the actual cremation service which usually lasts for two hours. Free cremation services are also being provided specially to indigent residents who died from COVID-19 in other local government units in Metro Manila including Quezon City, Caloocan, Navotas, Mandaluyong, San Juan, Bacati, Pasig as well as private sectors from Mandawa City in the island province of Cebu. The Taguig and Las Piñas City government, on the other hand, extend financial assistance to relatives of the deceased from COVID-19. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News & Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The DOH assures transparency of its expenditures for its COVID-19 response. Aiko Miguel details why. 44.57 billion pesos of the health department's budget has been utilized for the country's COVID-19 response. This came from the total DOH budget allotted for the COVID-19 pandemic, which is 51.55 billion pesos. 46% of the 44.57 billion pesos has been used for the procurement of personal protective equipment, face masks, and medicines. 30% of the utilized fund or equivalent to 15.47 billion pesos has been used for laboratory related commodities like testing kits and laboratory supplies the public can view where the health department allots its budget at www.covidbudget.ph so kami po ay uh, nagpo-closely monitor sa ating budget ano because we would want to be as efficient as possible as we know no na nandito po tayo dito sa ganitong sitwasyon at hindi tayo pwedeng magkaroon ng pag-aaksaya ng pera Meanwhile, last Tuesday, the Asian Development Bank approved the government's loan amounting to 125 million U.S. dollars. The loan will be used for the health system enhancement of the Department of Health. This also includes the construction of the additional facilities in the country for COVID-19 patients. The loan will also be used to procure ventilators that will be distributed to 70 DOH hospitals and 20 island local government hospitals. Laboratory staff and technicians will also undergo training as they will be assigned to operate and maintain laboratories. Hindi lang po yung mga equipments and mga supplies at sila po ay magkakapacitate din sa atin dito po sa country for us to be prepared for future pandemics uh, that may happen. Ay Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the country's Department of Health says that more than 3,000 new cases were reported today based on tests done by 98 out of 110 laboratories. Of the 3,249 additional cases, more than 1,500 were reported in the National Capital Region, while the provinces of Cavite, Laguna, Negros Occidental, and Batangas contributed more than 100 new cases each. Now, the total confirmed cases of coronavirus infection in the Philippines surpasses 205,000. Of the 68,357 active cases, 91.3% are in mild condition, 6.6% are asymptomatic, 0.8% are in severe condition, and 1.2% are critical. We have lost 97 more patients, but through our fervent prayers, medical interventions and sacrifices of our medical frontliners, 566 more people have won their battle against the invisible enemy. That brings the total recoveries nationwide to 133,990. Thanks be to God. Let's now take a closer look at the updated count of coronavirus cases around the world. 
The COVID-19 pandemic has now reached a total of close to 24.2 million confirmed cases in 188 countries, regions, and sovereignty. That's after more than 201,000 new cases were reported by different countries in the last 24 hours. The fast-spreading disease has claimed over 826,000 lives, while over 15.8 million patients across the globe have recovered from the new coronavirus infection. Thanks be to God. Welcome back to Y News. During today's House hearing on the corruption allegations in PhilHealth, the head of the Civil Service Commission denied the claims of one of her fellow officials. Ray Pelayo has the details why. I made no directive, guidance, or insinuations for the Commission to suppress information in any case. This is the response of Civil Service Commission Chairperson Alicia Bala before the Joint Committee Investigation of Public Accounts and Good Government and Public Accountability on the alleged corruption in PhilHealth. During a prior hearing, CSC Commissioner Eileen Lizada said that Bala issued guidelines not to share information about the cases of PhilHealth officials that are still pending in the CSC. I wish to clarify that none of the cases before the CSC involves issues of corruption. The pending cases before the Commission are mostly administrative cases involving personnel action, which are non-disciplinary in nature. We don't, we don't handle criminal cases involving graft and corruption. A portion of the copy of the CSC's meeting was played during the hearing. This information <coughs> should be within the Commission and should never be shared with the public or to whoever will be asking yes. us this. Uh, uh, in aid of legislation or, 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 or uh, investigation. Yung mga ganon. But Lisada said this portion is not included in the minutes of the meeting. The minutes was supposed to be approved. I did not move for the appro approval of the minutes kasi hindi ho naka-reflect and I wanted it to work within the system. Kaya nag-prepare ho kami ng memo to include na yung phrase po niya Na this information should not be shared with the public or whoever or anyone who will ask us in aid of legislation or investigation should be reflected in the minutes. One of the lawmakers asked Bala why the CSC allowed the waiving of qualifications for some key positions in field health. Sa kanyang position ngayon as senior vice president, dapat meron siyang master's degree. Sang ayun na rin sa qualification ninyo. Kaya lang inapprove ninyo yung request to amend that. Kasi Dr. Pargas, kahit na hindi master's degree, pwede siyang mag-hold ng position. Bala replied, It was not spelled out in the approved plantilla that this SVP is for legal. So they used the generic qualification standards, Your Honor. So therefore, when they submit the appointments for attestation by the Civil Service Commission, it would appear that they met, they met the minimum qualification standards. Lawmakers are worried how the PhilHealth will be properly run after the resignation of high-ranking officials, particularly former President and CEO retired General Ricardo Morales, Attorney Rodolfo Del Rosario of Legal Sector, and former Senior Vice President for Operations, Augustus De Villa. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, Senator Panfilo Lacson sees the possible filing of charges against top officials of the embattled state's health insurer, including the now-resigned PhilHealth president and CEO Ricardo Morales. According to the senator, it is clear there were violations, including technical malversation of public funds and Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act in the illegal disbursement of funds under the Interim Reimbursement Mechanism or IR of PhilHealth. It was also found out that PhilHealth Senior Vice President for Fund Management Renato Limshako did not withhold taxes for the IRM releases and instead sourced out the payment from the agency's corporate operating budget. He adds there, were, there was also the overpricing of information technology or IT equipment, particularly on the purchase of network switches. Laxon says Morales' resignation will not fully affect the cases that may be launched against him. 
ang uh, wala siyempre yung administrative capability. Dahil nag-resign sila, wala na silang uh, pananagutan administratively. Dahil wala na sila sa gobyerno, paano ko pa sila hapulin ng administrative na kaso. According to Senate President Vicente Soto III, he will present to the plenary the Committee of the Host report next week. But Laxon adds, if the reports of the Committee of the Whole and the Blue Ribbon Committee show clashing results and recommendations, senators may face an awkward situation. In his chairman's report presented to the media on Tuesday, which was based on last year's Blue Ribbon Committee's investigation on PhilHealth anomalies, Senator Richard Gordon tagged the regional vice presidents of PhilHealth as the mafia inside the agency who have been racking up millions of pesos from various fraudulent schemes, including overpayments and overcharging. However, during the recently concluded Committee of the Whole hearings, the regional vice presidents testified at the Senate against the alleged corruption of the executive committee. Ang sa akin, ha, bilang uh, investigator habang buhay, Kung meron silang kinalaman o sila yung mafia, ba't nila gugulhin? They will track the boat, hindi ba? Tahimik na lang lahat uh, kung uh, kumikita sila. Lacton says all the documents and testimonies presented during the Senate investigation on the alleged widespread corruption in PhilHealth have been submitted to the Department of Justice. Malacanang enumerates the qualifications for the next PhilHealth chief Position. Our palace correspondent, Rosa Dicos, tells us why. President Rodrigo Duterte has accepted the resignation of Philippine Health Insurance Corporation CEO and President Ricardo Morales. According to presidential spokesperson Harry Roque, the president already has the names of who he considers to fill the vacated position. The palace official enumerates the qualifications for the next PhilHealth chief not tainted by any corruption allegations, with managerial skills, with skills in the field of insurance, and with background on community and public health. There are already names being considered, pero nag-iingat po ang presidente sa pagpili. The palace official adds he is not interested in the post that Morales vacated. Roque is one of the officials who have primarily pushed for the investigation into the alleged corruption within the state health insurance. I'm a presidential spokesperson po. I'm busy with my job right now. Both President Duterte and Secretary Roque wish for the resigned PhilHealth's officials' recovery from lymphoma. The palace clarifies Morales' resignation will not free him from any accountabilities once his involvement in corruption activities and anomalies in PhilHealth is proven. The law is very clear. If there is a criminal liability, incurred when you're in office it subsists and um, public officers can be held liable for them whether or not they continue to be in office rosa licos untv news and rescue we serve the people we give glory to god the anti-red tape authority might conduct a summary hearing on telco applications for cell tower construction joan nano tells us why the Anti-Red Tape Authority, or ARTA, continues to conduct an investigation why there have been delays in the processing and approval of applications for the establishment of cell towers. It has been discovered that out of more than 1,500 applications filed, 122 have yet to be processed or approved, although the telcos have completed their applications and have paid the local governments. However, when the ARTA confronted the LGU's concern, it was revealed that the telcos have yet to complete the requirements and pay corresponding fees. Because of this, the ARTA will conduct a summary hearing to reconcile the matter as the two parties have contrasting claims. Ang ARTA ngayon is uh, conducting a summary hearing kasi merong, uh, merong claim at counterclaim ang magkabilang kampo. So we would be conducting a summary hearing by next week para makita natin kung kompleto ba talaga ito o hindi. If proven that the telcos have complied with all of the necessary requirements and have completed payment, the ARTA will immediately release an automatic approval of their application. If local government officials fail to adhere to the ARTA's decision to approve applications, the LGU officials may be suspended, the ARTA warned. Pag nakita natin na kompleto na yan, ang next step po natin dyan is i-declare ng ARTA po na automatically approved. And we would be uh, telling the LGUs automatic approval na po yan, kaya ilabas niyo po yung papel 
And upon their refusal, kung sila po yung magre-refuse, hopefully hindi na sila mag-refuse, ay doon sila talagang makakasuhan, masususpindi at uh, maaari pa hong matanggal kung uh, labis po sang, ng isang beses nila ito ulitin. President Rodrigo Duterte made a warning last month to shut down two major telecommunication companies, Globe and Smart, if they fail to improve the internet and telecommunication services in the country until December. The president also made an order to the LGUs to fast-track the approval of telco application for cell towers in order to improve their services. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. In other news, the Philippines Statistics Authority expects more delays in the census of population and housing, which commences in September. Enumerators will observe strict guidelines in gathering data from every household. Here's Asher Kadapan Jr. to tell us why. After months of delays due to the crisis brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, the Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA, is finally set to conduct the census of population and housing starting September 1st. But due to other circumstances, there will be yet another week of delay before the census begins in some portions of Region 1 and 8, as well as the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, or BARM. According to Undersecretary Dennis Mapa, National Statistics and Civil Registrar General of the PSA, they expect more delays in gathering data from households or areas that have a high risk for COVID-19. Kung may mga areas o mga households na uh, sinasabi nila na medyo high risk, uh, ito po ay aming iiwasan muna. At uh, babalik na lang yung aming mga enumerators pag uh, natapos na no? or okay na. Ngayon, uh, kung uh, kailangan talaga, uh, sabi ko kanina, hindi naman uh, kailangan na uh, face to face ang uh, pagkolek ng information. Mayroon tayong mga uh, iba't ibang paraan sa pagkolek ng information. To avoid contracting coronavirus disease, the more than 100,000 enumerators will be required to wear face masks and face shields. Physical distancing should also be observed when conducting the interviews just outside houses if that is more conducive. The PSA will not allow enumerators to go to areas considered as high risk for COVID-19 until the local government provides them clearance. Data collection may be done in different ways depending on the preference of the household. These include face-to-face -face interview, self-administered questionnaire that will be collected by the enumerator, phone interview, or online form through a code that will be provided by PSA personnel. Enumerators can be easily identified through their uniforms and identification. They will work in full coordination with barangay officials. Among the information required for the census are the household member's gender, age, marital status, education, religion, ethnicity, disability, occupation, and records of birth and death. Information about the main source of water, electricity, fuel resources, housing units, garbage disposal, toilet facility, information and communications technology or ICT devices like cellular phones, vehicles, and internet access will also be collected. The PSA assures that all private information that households disclose will remain confidential in accordance with the Philippine law. Undersecretary Mapa further explains that people who refuse to answer the questionnaires for the census may face corresponding penalties. The PSA appeals to the public to fully cooperate and participate in the census by providing truthful responses to achieve accurate results for the development of the country and its citizens. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News & Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Commission on Higher Education, or CHED, has suspended all its student internship abroad programs. According to CHED Chairperson Prospero de Vera, this is due to the uncertainties brought about by the pandemic in various parts of the world. If Filipino students will be safe to study abroad is unsure. It is also difficult for them to come back to the country once they depart, de Vera said. Para siguruhin ang kaligtasan ng ating mga estudyante, sinuspindi na ng komisyon lahat ng foreign internship ngayong school year na ito. Dahil hindi tayo sigurado sa kalagayan ng ating mga estudyante pag sila'y pinaalis natin,
Now, here's a glimpse of what's the weather like in parts of the country. Pag-asa is monitoring a low-pressure area or LPA inside the Philippine area of responsibility. As of, the, as of 3 p.m. today, the LPA was spotted 1,045 kilometers east of Baler, Aurora. Pag-asa says this will intensify the southwest monsoon, particularly over Visayas and Mindanao. Should the LPA develop into a tropical depression in the next 48 hours, it will be named Julian. Meanwhile, expect cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms over Batanes, Babuyan Group of Islands, Eastern Visayas, and Mindanao. Meanwhile, while Metro Manila and the rest of the country will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers due to the southwest monsoon or the localized thunderstorms. Take the necessary precautions because possible flash floods or landslides may occur during severe thunderstorms. No tropical cyclone advisory is issued. The Land Transportation Office has started the distribution of the newly designed motorcycle plates. The LTO says the new plates are compliant with Republic Act 11235. Vincent Arboleda will join us tonight to tell us why live. Yes, Vincent. Yes, Harleen Republic Act 11235 or the Motorcycle Crime Prevention Act aims to address the issue that criminals prefer to use motorcycles as their getaway vehicles when committing a crime. One of the provisions of RA 11235 is to make sure that all motorcycle plates must be readable for at least 15 meter distance. According to the Land Transportation Office National Capital Region West or LTO NCRW, the newly designed plates are more readable compared with the previous design. The plate is color-coded by region and has a QR code and RFID. LTO NCRW says this is compliant with the provision in RA11235. LTO NCRW has earlier said that 70,000 new motorcycle plates arrived at their office up for release. With this, the LTO has initiated the issuance of the newly designed plates to motorcycle leaders and owners. We were assured by our supply officers from the central office of the continuous supply until the backlog of about 1.4 million of LTO NCR only is uh, solved. Meanwhile, starting September, LTO NCRW will be implementing its moving forward operation. Under the program, the new design plate will be released together with the ORCR for newly registered motorcycles. Harleen, the agency also assured that the supply of the new plates will be continuous starting September. Back to you, Harleen. So, Vincent, just to clarify, with the release of these new motorcycle plates, does this mean that authorities will now fully implement the Motorcycle Crime Prevention Act and its penalties? Harleen, motorists need not worry for now as the LTO says they will not yet implement some provisions of the Motorcycle Crime Prevention Act as the law requires to have a license plate for both at the front and the back of the motorcycle. LTO says the decal plate that is supposed to be placed at the front of the motorcycle will be released soon. Harleen? And Vincent, after the initial release of these new motorcycle plates in Metro Manila, when will other regions receive their plates? Harleen, according to Regional Director Attorney Ginto of LTO NCRW, Regions 3 and 4 will be scheduled next week and to be followed by other regions. Harleen. Thank you so much, Vincent Arboleda, for that report. Government forces are running after four individuals they believe to be suicide bombers with links to perpetrators in holo bombings in 2019. Lea Ilagan details why. Western Mindanao Command Chief Major General Corleto Vinluan Jr. confirms to UNTV through text messages that they are hunting down four suicide bombers. Those include the three daughters and son-in-law of the Indonesian couple who perpetrated the Hulo Cathedral blast in January 2019 that left 
23 people dead and 109 others wounded. Vin Luan adds the four suicide bombers are more or less 14 to 20 years old. They are being cuddled by the group of ASG commander Mundi Sawadjaan. Mundi Sawadjaan is a niece of Abu Sayyaf leader Hatib Hajan Sawadjaan, the Emir of ISIS in the Philippines. Military says Mundi Sawadjaan was behind the Hulot twin blast on Monday that killed 14 government forces and civilians and injured 75 others. Vin Luan says the group were last monitored in Patikul Sulu. Aside from that information, security analyst Professor Romel Banlawi believes that the training of potential local suicide bombers continues. Bukod pa dyan, meron tayong mga nakukuhang informasyon na patuloy ang uh, pag-train ng mga potential suicide bombers, hindi lamang mga foreign nationals, pati na rin mga Filipino uh, citizens. He adds the terrorist group is capitalizing on grievances and appealing to emotions of locals through the deaths of their relatives to persuade them to make the ultimate sacrifice and become suicide bombers. And they capitalize on local grievances, they capitalize on the uh, feeling of injustices ng mga tao doon sa conflict affected areas and they uh, take advantage of the feeling of relative deprivation particularly in the aftermath of the Maragi Sins. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Local officials in Sulu oppose the recommendation to reimpose martial law in the province. Dante Amento tells us why. For Sulu Governor Abdo Sakurtan, recent martial rule was not effective enough to suppress terrorism in the province. He adds that the government should focus on the implementation of the new anti-terrorism law instead. If the government pushes the martial law implementation, it should not just be in Sulu. Alam mo yung anti-terror law, sumpra-sumpra pa yan sa martial law eh. Oh, dapat intindihin nila muna, anti-terror law. Isirain lang nila ang pangalan ng Sulu. Huwag ma-martial law sa Sulu lang. Sulu lang, kung pa siya. Meanwhile, Holo Sulu Mayor Kirk Hartan stresses that what they need are focused military operations on the specific bailiwicks of the terrorist Abu Sayyaf group to end violence. The local chief executive believes if government forces successfully neutralize the bandits, they can surely attain long-lasting peace. Hindi yan ang solusyon pag hindi Marcelo kasi pag Marcelo tayo, nanabasyan lang ng Danao. Ah, mayroon din nang nangyari sa bagay dito sa amin. Sulu officials appeal to the local populace to cooperate with authorities by reporting suspicious or armed group in their communities. Yesterday, the Armed Forces of the Philippines' Western Mindanao Command met with Sulu officials. Meanwhile, Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara clarifies that any decision on the martial law imposition needs factual basis. He adds that only the President has the necessary information to determine such move through his vast information channels. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Philippine National Police Chief Police General Archie Gamboa has directed PNP Special Action Force Director Police Major General Clifton M. Piso and Pro Bar Director Police Brigadier General Manuel Abu to augment police forces in Sulu. Gamboa has also issued an order directing a deeper probe on the Holo Twin Blast by mobilizing the Philippine Bomb Data Center and the Crime Laboratory for technical support to ongoing investigations of the deadly explosions in Wallace City, Holo Sulu on Monday. Meanwhile, in response to calls for the relief of the Holo Police, according to PNP spokesperson Police Brigadier General Bernard Banak, the PNP maintains its trust in the ground personnel. In response to the calls for the relief of the entire Holo Municipal uh, Police Station, the PNP maintains full confidence in our ground personnel mm -hmm. unless there is sufficient uh, evidence establishing criminal involvement or administrative lapses leading to the attack. And for the news abroad, here's Maria Latosa reporting live from Perth, Australia. 
William travel restrictions, shutdowns of non-essential stores and physical distancing rules have heavily impacted the retail business in Australia. This while delivering an uptrend to online sales which meant 11% of all retail sales came from online shopping. This behavior puts pressure on retailers to offer digitalized solutions for their customers. The unprecedented social restrictions have led to some permanent changes in shopping priorities from small social needs such as clothes, travel, and entertainment to more high-valued investments like home improvements. However, according to AMP Capital Senior Economist Diana Mosina, despite wide unemployment in Australia since March, there have been total household incomes rise during the pandemic due to the government subsidies COVID-19 cases have reached 25,205 as of today, with the state of Victoria still with the most number of cases, now at 18,608. Elsewhere in France, French Prime Minister Doc Castex said on Thursday the government needs to intervene to contain the new coronavirus outbreak spread as the virus was circulating widely among young people. As France near La Cove, or oh, the beginning of the school year, grandparents should avoid picking up their grandchildren from school to avoid possible infection, Prime Minister Castex added. The French government is hoping to avoid a new nationwide lockdown, but the country has been facing a resurgence of new COVID-19 infections since July, with an acceleration from mid-August. Gastex says the virus is four times more prevalent in the French population than a month ago, and 21 areas are now classified as red zones. As of today, France has cumulative cases surpassing 291,000 with over 30,000 deaths. <music> Meanwhile, the European Commission said today it has signed a contract on behalf of EU states with AstraZeneca for the supply of at least 300 million doses of its COVID-19 vaccine candidate. The move follows as an advance purchase agreement signed by Belgium with a British drug maker earlier in August. It is the first contract EU signed with a maker of potential COVID-19 vaccines. Hurricane Laura is moving northwards over southwestern Louisiana, according to the U.S. National Weather Service Hurricane Laura Advisory No. 30. Residents are warned of catastrophic storm surge, extreme winds, and flash flooding that may continue in portions of Louisiana. As of 4 a.m. CDT, it was located at about 50 kilometers north northwest of Lake Charles, Louisiana, and about 80 kilometers northeast of Fort Arthur, Texas. It has maximum sustained winds of up to 195 kilometers per hour. According to advisory number 30, the storm surge warning west of High Island, Texas, has been discontinued. The tropical storm warning from San Luis Pass to High Island, Texas has been discontinued. And the hurricane watch from east of intracoastal city of west of Morgan City, Louisiana has been canceled. Tornadoes are possible today and tonight over parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, and western Mississippi. TikTok CEO Kevin Mayer said on Wednesday he has quit the company. His move comes as tensions soar between Washington and Beijing over the Chinese-owned video platform. Mayor's resignation comes days after TikTok filed a lawsuit challenging a crackdown by the U.S. government over claims the wildly popular social media app can be used to spy on Americans. TikTok has been at the center of a diplomatic storm between the U.S. and China, and President Donald Trump signed an executive order on August 6, giving Americans 45 days to stop doing business with TikTok's Chinese parent company, ByteDance, effectively setting a deadline for a sale of the app to a U.S. company. company. 
And those are the updates here in Australia and in other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you, Maria Latosa, reporting live from Perth, Australia. In a historic day, not only for the NBA, but in sports history, three NBA playoff games scheduled Wednesday were not played. Meanwhile, two-time Grand Slam winner and currently ranked as the world's number 10 women's tennis player, Naomi Osaka, sat out Western and Southern Open semifinals in protest. And the tennis tournament at the Western and Southern Open on Thursday, New York time, hit the pause button. Aaron Romero tells us why. The NBA and the NBPA, or the National Basketball Players Association, agreed to postpone three playoff games scheduled on Wednesday, August 26. This is in light of the Milwaukee Bucks' decision not to proceed with their game against the Orlando Magic. The Bucks, who are set to take on Orlando in Game 5 of their first round series at 4.10 p.m. Eastern Time, decided not to play in protest of the Jacob Blake shooting. The Houston Rockets and the Oklahoma City Thunder also planned not to play Game 5 of their series, and the Los Angeles Lakers and Portland Trail Blazers did not want to play either. When we take the court and represent Milwaukee and Wisconsin, we are expected to play at a high level, give maximum effort, and hold each other accountable. We hold ourselves to that standard, and in this moment, we are demanding the same from lawmakers and law enforcement. We are calling for justice for Jacob Blake and demand the officers be held accountable. For this to occur, it is imperative for the Wisconsin State Legislature to reconvene after months of inaction and take up meaningful measures to address issues of police accountability, brutality, and criminal justice reform. For players like LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Kyle Kuzma, what happened to Blake was very troubling and unacceptable. It's what we've been talking about, and it's what we're going to continue to talk about. Um, you know, having you know two boys of my own, and, and me being an African American in, in America, and to see um, what continues to happen with the police brutality towards my kind, um, continue to see what the uh, what goes on with the, the just the injust. Um, it's just, it's very troubling. It's very troubling. We want justice for Jacob Blake. Um, you know, the good thing is that you know, he was, he is stable and, and survived. But um, from what I heard, the details, he was breaking up a fight and was walking to his car and, you know, got shot seven times. So um, it's unacceptable. You know, just such a terrible situation that we're going through in this country still after so many years of this. Other teams have released their own statements saying they stand with the NBA, the NBPA, and the Milwaukee Bucks condemning police brutality. According to the NBA, Game 5 of each series will be rescheduled. Meanwhile, tournament play at the Western and Southern Open also pauses on Thursday. In a statement, the ATP Tour says as a sport, tennis is collectively taking a stance against racial inequality and social injustice that once again has been thrust to the forefront in the United States. The USTA, ATP Tour, and WTA have decided that matches on August 27 will not proceed. Play will resume on Friday, August 28. Aaron Romero, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Those are the reasons behind the news, August 27, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro III, because... Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo, we serve the people, we give glory to God.